Hey guys, Baker, what's up? What's up, Baker? What's up, guys? Uh, part 2 of the 3D motion tracking, Buju, After Effects, No Cinema 4D, all that good stuff. So part 1, we did the actual tracking. Part 2 right here, we're going to be doing the compositing, and I'm going to show you how to do pretty much this right here. The screen's a little popping up, and uh, it's going around, and it says, jump off. You won't do it. No balls. And then it flips and goes away. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. Pretty sweet stuff. And again, like I said last time, um, the reason why I like this is, uh, well, one, I don't really know how to use Cinema 4D. And uh, number two, you can actually change this uh, whenever you want, uh, update it, and uh, when you render in After Effects and stuff. So you don't have to render in Cinema 4D, move it over, all that stuff. You can always just you know work in After Effects all in one program. Well, besides Buju, but you know what I mean. No Vegas, all that stuff. So, um, last time when we exported the camera solve, uh, saved it to our desktop. So we'll just go to the desktop and just find that Maya file. So rotating camera solve dot ma. So we'll import that, and it makes a comp for us. So we double click, and uh, it's all black. And there's that null object we uh, exported. Remember that. So we'll just drag in the uh, MOV file that we use to track. Remember, instead of the uh, JPEG sequence, we just use this, and uh, there we go. So uh, comp is 59.9, or actually it's, uh, I do believe it is 60, but that's okay. Uh, still matches up pretty nicely. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, make the screen really quick. So we'll make a uh, new composition. Uh, it's 1280 by 720 is fine. Um, frame rate, if you want, you can do the same frame rate. Okay, so i uh, just going to make a new solid really quick. Uh, we'll make it red and uh, make the uh, rounded rectangle tool and double click. So it rounds it at the end. Click on the mask, duplicate, set the second one to subtract, and we'll decrease the expansion like this and just feather it. So it's kind of like, you know, just, you know, not a solid thing, whatever. So, I'll also maybe uh, decrease the opacity just a little bit to like 90. <coughs> so if we turn on the transparency, you can see this is, it is transparent. And um, let's go ahead and uh, type our text here. So, I'll say, uh, oh, oh, hey guys. Um, and then I'll boost this up and then just kind of put at the top. And then I'll make another text and type some gibberish and scale this down. Pretty small. Yeah, it's a bunch of gibberish and stuff. You can actually type stuff because uh, unless you make it small enough, but the people might be able to read this if you're watching your edit. So, and uh, of course I can always copy and paste, but I don't feel like doing that right now. Okay, so I got my bunch of text right. So I'll. Uh, it's uh, aligned to the right, so you can uh, center it, you can have it to the left, or uh, this is aligned to the left, whatever. And uh, I'll just scale that down even more, it's a bit large, so that, that's okay. And uh, we'll go for about three seconds, and effects and presets, uh, decoder, fade in. Search that little preset, drag it onto your clip, push U to see the keyframes, and you can kind of see it animating on. Pretty cool. And um, let's see, what else can I do? I have this uh, overlay that so many people have been using nowadays, but <clears throat> I think it's okay. Got the numbers and the matrix kind of stuff, so I'll just put that on top. And I'll right click, transform, fit to comp. So that stretches it perfectly, and we'll set this to screen. So now we just kind of got some crazy stuff going on. And uh, I'll do that uh, little TV grid thingy that. Uh, some of you might have seen the tutorial. I don't even know where I am anymore. But um, so type in grid, and we'll bring on the grid. Let it load up. Okay, so uh, width and height sliders anchor to zero, comma zero, and uh, width will expand that up so that's out of the way. Heights will bring that down to ten, 
and uh, border 5, and that looks good. And what we're going to do is uh, change this to, let's see, will screen look good? But uh, overlay or soft light. Let's do soft light. doesn't overpower it too much. And uh, maybe you can just turn down the opacity too, so the lines aren't so, you know, you just want this to be like a subtle kind of grid looking effect. So that's, you can put in more detail, but that's, that's as basic as I, I want to get. So we'll go into the rotating camera solve comp, and uh, this, this will retitle this comp to screen. And uh, we'll go in here and bring out the screen comp. Boom. And now we need to make this 3D. Click. And uh, this null object that we exported right there, we're going to take the position, uh, copy, and then position of the screen and paste. So it basically copies right in the that position. So we get that kind of effect. And uh, that's all right if you want. But I want this to uh, be facing him and stuff. So uh, I'm going to bring this off. So push P for position and bring it off the Z axis. So make sure it's kind of far enough out. Let's see. And it, it wasn't a perfect track. It was decent. But uh, it'll work. Bring this up. And uh, I can also scale it down like that. Scale it to maybe 50% or so. And uh, we'll rotate it. Rotate it this way. So negative 180 should be uh, just about right. So we got this floating screen, and uh, we can change the transfer mode to maybe add. So look at the screen, looking at it, he's like, "Ooh, hey guys, what is up?" Baker here, and just kind of move this over. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just duplicate this twice. And uh, I'm just going to make some more screens off to the side. I'm not going to make this too uh, too fancy or anything. I'm bringing that in. So basically what I'm doing is making a, uh, almost like a, what kind of shape would that be? Like a pentagon almost? Or not a pentagon, trapezoid. Just kind of rotate it, facing him. And uh, bring that in. And if you want, let's see if this will work. Go to the top view. Zoom out here. Let's see if it'll show up. There you go. So this no oops, don't want to move that. This no object, this little red dot represents the uh, the guy, and then these three things are the uh, the screens. So you know you can rotate this a little bit more and then just kind of position it like that. Make sure it's you know facing them and stuff. And then we'll just go back to the active camera, and we'll go to fit, and those are our screens. So I'll show you how to make them animate in. So we'll go to the first one, and we want this one to pop up around here. So this one is this screen. So we'll push S for scale, and uh, we'll unlink the, the link thing, uncheck the link. And we have three parameters here. So this is the X, Y, and Z scale. So we'll set a keyframe, and uh, we want this to uh, first grow out. So move forward just a little bit. We want this to look like this. And uh, before that, it needs to have that same value. So we'll, we'll set this down to 5% for the Y. And back here, we'll set this to 5%. But this one, the X, needs to be 0. So what that does is it grows it out like that and then the third keyframe will be bringing the Y value back up to 50% so you see this it grows out and then up and uh, of course we can highlight all of them and click easy ease so a little bit smoother and I'll just copy these keyframes and um, uh, this about here I'll take the middle one and press S and paste those keyframes onto there so do the same little animation and then the last one as well when it gets around here so that one S and paste so get the little growing thing it's like and now I'll show you how I animated it out so the trick here is we created a 3D null object and we parented it so we'll go ahead and make a new null object. 
and we'll make this 3D. And we'll copy the position of the null object we exported because it's right down here. And copy and paste. So we got basically the same null object. And uh, I guess I could have just duplicated it, but for the sake of this tutorial, you can uh, copy and paste positions and stuff. And uh, we want this to be just about the same height as all the other screens. So if I just check, this one's about negative 430. So I'll just go in here and type negative 430. And uh, we want this to be kind of in the middle. So that looks about good. So it's basically like right on his, uh, his stomach. So that's, that's good. So what we're going to do is take all three of these screens, take the little parent pick whip thing, and pick whip to the null object. So what we're going to do here is after that, we're going to flip it. So no object. So we'll hit R for rotation. And this is going to be on the Z rotation axis. So we'll click once for a keyframe, move forward, and then rotate it like this. Beatboxing. OK. Now from here, we want this to scale down and shrink. So we stay at the same spot, push S for scale. Unlink the, uh, oops, okay, yeah, right there. And keyframe the scale, move forward a half a second, and this is going to be the X position. See that? So I stretch it this way. So I'll bring that in pretty close, about there. And then uh, <clears throat> from here, we want this to rotate up and the scale, actually. So I'll click on here, hold Shift, and then do R. And then this will be the X rotation, so keyframe the X, move forward a half a frame to 13 seconds, rotate this up like that to negative 90, and then the scale we also have to change. So the scale from here is 26, 100, 100, so we'll go forward, and we want this to shrink uh, the Y, so see that? Shrink this way, shrink that to zero. So here's our full animation. So this uh, grows and it says, oh, hey, guys. This one goes out and it grows up. This one grows out and grows up. And then it flips, shrinks that way, flips up and shrinks at the same time. Boom! And, of course, there's a little bit of a 3D uh, conflict right here. So you, what you could do is just mask out the guy's head. But it's so fast, you won't really be able to notice that much. But uh, just uh, easy ease. And then one quick thing is uh, you can also do, uh, I don't know how I'm doing on time, but try to go fast. Just add some particles, like particular. Whew. Hope this isn't over 15 minutes, because I would be pissed. But uh, we'll make this a box emitter. Just kind of extend the, uh, the size and whatnot. So, maybe a thousand was too big. Nah, I think it was okay. So, we just got some buttload of particles and stuff, you know, just stretch that out. And then uh, I'll just set this gravity. Where's the gravity? There it is. It's like negative 10. So, we just got some particles floating up, and they are all motion tracked as well. So, it gives it that extra. Extra parallax thing and stuff, so looks pretty cool. So go ahead and like the video if you learned something, if you enjoyed it, or if you're just watching because you're jealous of After Effects. And uh, if you don't know about After Effects and stuff, watch my other tutorials and you'll learn. So you don't have to use Cinema 4D, you won't have to use Vegas, all that cool stuff. So uh, again, like the videos, leave some feedback, peace, and stuff. Okay.